Hey guys. Hey, hey, hey. Dina Bailey's the first one in the building. How are you guys doing? I know it's super late and I'm sorry y'all for coming live so late, but I did want to, you know, get out here and talk to y'all about a few things. Um, when I started feeling better, so I'll go through why I've been in my aim. Um, and I want to go through the first two to three days of our Bali trip because me nor my Janae, neither one of us have really got on here and really talked about it. Um, and it's because like literally as soon as I got home, y'all, I got sick. Um, so let me say hello to y'all and then I'll get into the story. But thanks to everybody that's coming in. Anybody that's going to catch the replay. Thank you so much. Make sure you guys share this live. So Dina Bailey's the first one in the building. How are you on this good old Monday afternoon? <laughs> hey, Gwen, uh, Houston. Hey, Dede. Hope you're feeling better. I am, Gwen. I'm still a little sick, but it's getting better. It's getting better. Hey, Rita. Hey, Sandra. Was popping my rug. Leo Grandma is in the building. She says, hey, Dan, chat. Glad you're doing better. Thank you, boo. I'm definitely feeling a little better enough, feeling better enough for me to get on here and really talk to y'all about my Bali experience because I feel like the trip went by too fast, y'all. I'm not even gonna lie, like that trip went by too fast. And I want to tell y'all my mindset and my mind frame going into the Bali trip, how I was feeling to like literally being there and how much I've had a transformation just from the, a couple of days before to like literally coming home and feeling completely different. And this is the power of positive people, right? This is why positivity is so powerful. I'm gonna get into it. Hey, Miss Sherry. Hey, Lawanda. Hey, Leslie Cole. Hey, Cheryl T. Hey, Lisa Johnson. How are you? Hey, Kitty Lover. Hey, Tasha. Hey, Tioni Weathers. Hey, Shelly. Hey, Ginger Speaks. Hey, Kelbo. Kelbo in the building, and the safe zone is in the building. Hey, love, how are you? Hey, beautiful diva, how are you doing on this good Monday afternoon? And my Medea voice, afternoon, good afternoon to everybody coming in the chat. <laughs> I hope y'all been having a good week. I hope today was a good start off to this week. I've been trying to catch up on homework and all that type of stuff. I'm so over school. I even give y'all an update with that. And just give y'all my thoughts on what's been going on lately in my life. Because I haven't been really on here talking to y'all, telling y'all my thoughts and all of that jazz. So we're going to get into it. We're going to bounce a little bit all over the place. But first, we're going to talk about Bali, okay? Faye Kelly says, Day Day the Champ, good evening, beautiful. I have missed you. Welcome home. Much love. Thank you, Miss Faye Kelly. I missed y'all too. I really, really did. Um, my body had to process a lot of different things. I'm still on Bali time, y'all, so my my time is all out of whack, but I, we getting it together. Hey, Easy Cooking with Nay. Hey, Ozella. Lawanda saying hey to everybody. Hey, Life of Patricia Stevens. How are you, love? Kelbo saying hey to Lawanda. Lawanda saying hey to Ozella and Patricia Stevens. Patricia Marshall is in the building. How are you, my love? Hey, Dorothy Sermons was popping, Janice. Hey, bro. Hey, Lakeisha. Hey, Tater. Hey, Granny. Hey, uh, Dede. How are you feeling? Praying for a speedy recovery. I'm feeling okay. I'm at a good 69, 70%. I'm not all the way there. Hey, Tony. Hey, Aunt Tiffany. Hey, Sharon. Um, She says, hey, beautiful Dede mods in chat. Hello, love. Oh, let's see. Faye Kelly saying hey um, to Ozella. Faye Kelly is so sweet, y'all. She's always saying hey to everybody. I love Miss Faye Kelly. Hey, Four Leaf Clover. She's always asking everybody how they doing. You know, wanting to check up on everybody. We love to see it. Hey, Small Talk with Lakeisha. How are you? Hey, Miss LB. <laughs> how are you doing? That jet lag ain't no joke. Child, it's been like we got back on Monday? No, we got back. I don't know which day we got back, y'all, <laughs> to be honest with y'all. But I'm still dealing with the time difference. So right now it is late in Bali, like wee hours of the morning. And um, 
this is the time that I'll be asleep. But when it's time for everybody to be up on U.S. time, I'll be sleep or up or whatever however it goes <laughs> hey nicole hey charlotte hey surrender hey peach peach plats and life team she said hey chat forgive me Moz and chat where's my manners hey um granny i'm sure the Moz don't mind what you said oh my god lamar you throwing me off hold on y'all can y'all still hear me my my nephew is calling me I'm going to have to call him back later. Lil Myron always calling me. Um, Hey, Deb, how are you? Hey, Mary, how are you? Okay, so y'all, let's get into it. Shout out to all 180 y'all in the building. If you are a content creator and you have a YouTube, go ahead and share this live. Um, If you can you know like it go ahead and get this live a likey like um i put the the link to the membership badges on my community wall so if you want to join you want to get you a membership badge you want to represent i think it's day rough riders day go getters and day trendsetters something like that the three levels that i have look is 111 in the building look at those angel numbers look at god speaking to me um hey laura ann how are you love hey classy lady Hey, Patricia. It's a lot of y'all. Hey, Miss Annette. So I'm going to go back from the few days before Bali, how I was feeling, um, the things that I was dealing with. And I'm not going to go into details with the things that I was dealing with because y'all know it's a lot of evil people who can't stand me on these YouTube streets. So I'm not going to get super transparent and all, you know, into my business. I'm not going to reveal anything that I had going on to these YouTube streets because like y'all all know, these streets are cutthroat. People are sitting back waiting to um have something to say, to use something that they can say against me. You know, all of the negative, nasty things that they do on these YouTube streets um, that I used to participate in, you know, they can't wait to it to do it. So I'm not going to be as transparent as I could be. Maybe I will come out later on and be a little bit more transparent about what I was going through right before this Bali trip, but that's not for right now. Hey, Day in chat. It's good to hear your voice. I'm going to try to stay up to hear your stories. Okay. Thank you so much. I'm sorry, y'all, for coming live this late. It's literally my fault. I should have did this um, earlier. Exactly, Day. Keep a measure of privacy. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because people is stalking me and watching me 24-7, y'all. I can't get on here and really just be my natural, true, authentic self because I got a bunch of haters watching me, right? I'm ready to put their two cents in where it, two cents is not even needed. But anyways, so leading up to the trip to Bali, I wasn't really feeling really good. Um, I was going through a lot of different stuff. Um, I had a, a few things going on. Um that was just like, damn, this stuff is happening back to back to back, right? And I'm sitting here and I'm questioning, like, is God testing me? Is God trying to test my strength? Is he trying to test how I react to the situation? I'm just trying to figure out what's going on. So before Bali, hey, Day Boo and Chat listening and getting Katie in bed. She had a hair appointment, so we late. Okay, hey, Brittany. I want to see Katie hair too, girl. Hey, Katie, girl. Um, hey, it's me, Riri. How are you? Hey, Jersey girl. I'm seeing you come in a building. Hey, uh, Carmel, one, two, three. Hey, Dad Speaks Gems. I like your new name, love. So I was going through some stuff before I even went to the Bali trip. So I was like, you know what? I'm not going. Right before the Bali trip, I was saying, I'm not going. I got too much going on. School is stressing me out. It's a lot. I got all of these different things going on, like life problems or whatever. You know, we all go through life issues. You know, I'm human just like everybody else. Where uh, where my uh, love, Majine, been at? I don't know, like, Michael, but you don't ever be over here. So <laughs> it's it's funny to see that you came all the way over here to look for Nana. Nana, I'm not going to come back out here. Hey, Lady K. She'll be out here, y'all. She just been working. We trying to get back into the swing of things, y'all was still being jet lagged. So before Bali, I wasn't even going to go. I'm sorry to hear this today. It's all good though, Riri. I'm strong. 
So it's nothing that, that happens in life that's going to stop me from doing what I want to do, period. And I think that was the whole overall message of what I was going through right before this Bali trip is to like, you know, we face different obstacles in life, but the way you decide to respond to them will make all of the difference, right? So I think that's what, um, I don't know if that's the lesson God was trying to give me throughout these different obstacles, trials, and tribulations, but that's what I took from it, right? So I wasn't going to go. Literally, the day of, I decided to go. And y'all, these titles are clickbait like hell. Uh, <laughs> just a forewarning. I had a good time, but I'm just expressing my emotions, how I felt leading up to the trip. Um, So I wasn't going to go all of that jazz. The last day I was like, you know what? I just spent all my money. It would be stupid not for me to go. Um, I can't let life circumstances control you know, how I respond to things or how I react to things in situations like that, right? So I ended up going, right? And I went up kind of a little bit with my guard up because I didn't know what to expect. Hey, um, un unapologetically, Stephanie, how are you? Thanks, glad you like it, just like and share. Thank you, boo. I hope you have fun. I did, we're about to get into it. Hey, Wendy, hey, Leo girl. Y'all, these titles be clickbait, okay? Like, don't be thinking nothing is wrong. This be clickbait. This is how you get the haters in the building, okay? They nosy. They be wanting to know, so this is how you get them in there, right? And I'm going to tell y'all, like, why I had this um, this sense of, like, just going up with my guard up and all that type of stuff, right? So, first of all, me and Majine, we flew out together from the Oakland International Airport. I think it was Oakland or San Francisco. I think San Francisco is where, where it was. Um, that was a long flight, 17 hours, the first flight uh, going there from San Francisco to Singapore. Um, it wasn't that bad. I thought it was going to be worse than what it was, but I always look up, you guys, and I don't know if you guys watched my last Bali video, but we were um, flying economy or whatever, and you know how they always got three people to a row. So I was like, you know, oh, I hope I don't get somebody who's sitting in the middle. Hopefully, when we get on this plane, it's one seat that could be empty so that it'd be more comfortable for me and whoever I sit next to, right? And I don't know what it is, y'all. And I said this in my last video. Every time I'm flying somewhere, especially where it's like a little bit of long hours, I always end up getting lucky. This is like the third time that I flew that one of the seats was empty in typically the middle seat. So when I got on the flight, it was cool. The lady was really sweet that I sat next to. Um, she was going to Bali as well. I made a good friend. We was talking the whole time. She was giving me information just about spirituality, about health and wellness. And I think it's so weird because anytime I'm on a plane, a train, BART or whatever, I'm always running into people who are either like spiritual, religious, or health conscious. And I think that's God's way of telling me that I need to get on my ish as far as my health and as far as my spirituality and all of that. Now, I know I have these things innate in me already. Like I have certain spiritual teachers that are already built in me, but I think that God keeps sending these people in my life because he wants me to become more in tune with that side of myself, right? Hey, Anita. Um, if I'm not feeling something, I will cancel at the last minute in a heartbeat. My friend hates that I do that. <laughs> yeah, that's what I did, y'all. I had canceled last minute. Um, but then I ended up going, which made the guy a little confused that was doing the trip. So I know I was, he was like, dang, this girl, she giving me a run for my money already, and she ain't even here yet. <laughs> um, but he actually ended up being really sweet, y'all. We're going to get into that part, too. So. The flight was cool. I sat next to this angel, and it's so crazy because um, it's always a white lady. <laughs> I think I told y'all about this part. Hey, Christine. Uh, Yolanda said, hey, it's me, Riri. Y'all said, hey to Yolanda. Hey, Nikki G. So she was cool or whatever. We talked. She gave me some good advice. She was an older white woman, so 
she's been through life, dealt with a few things in life. And she was just telling me what I should, what I shouldn't do, all of these different things. Put me up on game about spirituality and wellness and all of that type of stuff, right? So it ended up being a good flight for me. Now, I was like sleepy the whole entire time, y'all. Like as soon as I got on the plane, I was ready to go to sleep because it was like midnight when me and my Janae flew out. So the lady was really sweet. She was like, oh, nobody's sitting right here. Like if you want to lay down and put your head down so you can actually go to sleep, you can. Because she was like, as soon as you got on the plane, you were tired. And I'm like, yeah, girl, it's midnight. Like I'd be sleep earlier than this. You feel me? So I was tired getting on that plane. Hey, Katrina, especially with the way that we traveled, you guys, we got on BART. My mom dropped us off at BART in Antioch. We took the BART from Antioch all the way to San Francisco because the BART goes straight to the international airport. And Majine got all of this footage, y'all. Whenever she um, could put all the stuff together and upload a vlog for y'all, I'm telling y'all, it's going to be a treat, okay? A real treat. So um, I was tired. So I got a lot of sleep. I slept most of the glad you're feeling better day. Thank you, Katrina. So I was just like, yeah, you know, it was a good flight for me. So once we got out there to Singapore, we were late. Um, our flight was delayed out in San Francisco. So once we got to Singapore, um, and I and I explained this uh, already, but I want to tell it over a little bit so I can just tell y'all, you know, leading up to us finally getting there. So the flight from Singapore to Bali had left us already. So we had to switch flights, we waited for like an hour. The Singapore airport was beautiful. I can't wait to go back because Singapore is the next spot that I want to go to other than Belize, right? Because they their, their stuff is just so updated and so modern and next level. So I want to go there. The airport, beautiful, right? Hey, Dede, I know you had so much fun. I did, Mookie. It was a great time. So... That happened. We got on our flight. We made it um, to the airport in Bali. And then the guy, JT, who was the organizer for the trip, he had the driver there waiting for us. So we got on the um, little caravan and there was a couple of other females that we were waiting on to get off of their flights. And while we were waiting, we all was sitting there getting to know each other. So um, this time when we were in the van, just first meeting somebody, it was me, Majine, this lady named Liz, um, this girl named Danny, and who else was in the car? It was somebody else. Miss Rhonda from Oakland, I think she was there. <laughs> I'm not sure. But we were all sitting there talking to each other, trying to fill each other out. Like, have you guys ever traveled solo before? Do you guys typically do these group travel retreats and all of that type of stuff? And I was just letting them know, like, I don't even know what this – trip is about. This is something that my sister put together and I just kind of hopped on board because who don't want to go to Bali? Who don't want to travel the world? Um, certainly not somebody like me. I want to see different cultures. I want to travel the world. I want to learn different languages. I want to get out and talk to the, the locals. Like all of that was so my vibe. Now I may not be so quick to run and travel right now because I still feel like I'm in my grind mode. But I thank God every day that I have a sister that I have because she pushes the 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 envelope for She pushes us forward as far as a family with progression and seeing the world and seeing different things and trying new things, right? So shout out to Nana, my Jeanette, okay? So um, I was like, yeah, I'm going to go on this trip with my sister. This will be a great spring break trip. Um, it'll be a great graduation gift to myself. Then life just starts happening. So I'm like, okay, I'm not going no more, whatever, whatever, whatever. So as soon as we get there, y'all, we pull up to the first resort. I think it's called Kepa's Resort. And I think it was in Uban. So we pull up there. It was getting a little late. So um, it was like maybe ugh, six by the time we got there. And so when we got there, everybody was sitting in the lobby waiting for us, right? which I thought was funny, or they was just waiting for everybody to come in because people was getting there earlier and some people was getting there a few days later. So when we got there, everybody's just sitting in the lobby. Um, I was like, okay, this is interesting. Like the ladies on the bus were cool. Um, I'm still feeling them out. So I I'm excited to meet new people. But at the same time, this is a little weird because I've never traveled and did things in groups with strangers. I've always traveled with my family. So it was a different environment for me, right? And the fact that I didn't even know the basis of this whole trip, it was like I was jumping into something without even knowing, which actually ended up being a good thing, y'all. 
it ended up being a good thing because it was something completely different than what I expected, right? So we were meeting everybody. We meet um, the guy who put the trip together. We meet his brother and his friend that was helping him run the trip. We meet some of the other people, and then we head to our rooms because it was getting late. And dinner, I guess, at the resort had stopped at 7, or we had a couple of minutes to get together, you know, shower, get settled in our rooms, get dressed so we can go down and all have dinner together. So we go to our rooms or whatever, right? Hey, Sandra. And it's so funny because me and Majanae, as soon as we get in our rooms, we trying to turn on the lights to our rooms and I'm just like dang why my light not working <laughs> so it was one of those hotels y'all where you got to put the hotel key inside of the little slot that they have sitting on the wall to make all the lights turn on make the air conditioning turn on and I was like I oh, know this is not the start to our <laughs> to our vacation with the fact that none of the lights work. So I was sitting in my room, y'all, playing with the lights, trying to figure it out. And I'm just like, you know what? I can't figure it out. And it was so funny because the part where it says insert card here, I'm like, why the hell would you need to insert a card into the wall? I'm confused. So I went down to Majanae's room. And I'm like, sister, do you get how to uh turn on the lights in your room? Because the lights in my room is not working. She was like, no, I've been trying to figure that out. I'm going to just call the guy who um who um who's doing the retreat because I don't know what I'm doing. So she called him. He came to her room. He helped us um do our lights and all of that. He was like, you know, all you got to do is put the card in here. And I was like, wow, mind blown. Pfft. Didn't know that's how that works, right? <laughs> Um, and, and it was just hella funny because we, we didn't expect for it to be so simple. We thought it was like hella complicated. <laughs> and I was just like, okay, I feel a little slow for that, but whatever. So he came and he helped us with that. And he was just sitting there talking to us for a little bit. And, um, it was funny because he seen me and he was like, oh, I didn't know you were coming. And when your sister said, because I got your email, what you said or whatever, and why you wanted to cancel and all of that type of stuff. But um, your sister told me we on our way. And I was like, well, who is we? <laughs> and I was like, it's two of us, right? So he was like, okay. So I had to go back, get your room together, all that different type of stuff or whatever, right? So he was a real sweetheart. He was really accommodating. Um, so he was just like, and y'all, he is such a loving person. It was kind of weird because at first I didn't know how to really accept it because I kind of was like having my guard up. Hey, Pepper China, just a little bit. So we were sitting there talking for a little bit. He was like, you know what? I deserve, you deserve some love right now. I owe you some love. And I was like, okay. So he like, gave me a hug and like kissed me on the top of my head like he was my dad or something so I was like okay sir like is this really how you are <laughs> the normal people don't walk around acting like this so the fact that you have so much love to spread and it's genuine it was kind of I was a little bit taken aback by it just a little bit um, but the situation, it made sense, right? But I'm just not that type of person who approach situations where I'm just like, oh, let me give you love and da 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 Like, I could give love, but it's not to the level to where I'm like, you know. I don't know. It was just, I don't even know how to describe it, y'all. Hey, Lakeisha, dad, stop laughing at me because I'm serious. So when I first got there, I was like, okay, this is cool. We're going to see how this is, um, especially coming from arguing with these people on YouTube. I, and ever since my brother passed, I really have been walking around with my guard up. I've been, you know, walking around on go mode and ready to argue with people or whatever, you know, or just being really cautious and standoffish to the people that I talk to with information I reveal, all that type of stuff, right? Because <laughs> YouTube low-key got me traumatized in a way. <laughs> hey, Danielle knew me. Why y'all laughing at me, Nikki G? Oh, hello, daytime TV and chat. Hey, speak the truth, girl. Hey, girl. So I thought that was really interesting. So at that point, I was like, okay, he seems cool, but I still got my guard up, right? Because I'm like, I don't know how real this is. You feel me? So I go to my room, 
I put my little key in the, in the wall. I get in the shower. We had like 20 minutes. I got in the shower so fast, y'all. Did my makeup, got dressed. We got downstairs so we could all have dinner with each other, right? So the dinner was beautiful. That was when everybody really started to get to know each other. We Everybody introduced themselves, and we played a couple games that night. So at dinner, we all sat down at this big table at the resort. We all talked. It was a lot of black people, y'all, which was so beautiful to me. I've never seen that many black people on a group trip, on any trip that I've been on, right? So it was a nice, it was a change of scenery that was cool. So once I started learning like who he was, because I didn't follow him on Instagram or anything to like day two, day three. So I'm like, oh, this guy's for real. This is really like his crusade. And he's always about positivity, just having positive thoughts and spreading love. Right. And I don't know why that feels so unfamiliar to me, because I'll always be on go mode. <laughs> I'm always like not too trusting of people, you know. And I think that's something that God wanted me to work on, too. And he showed me, you know, that there is great people in this world who are nice to you and they're being genuine. It's no ulterior motives. They don't want nothing from you. They just want to pour into you and you pour into them. And I know people like that exist, but when you're surrounded by negativity so much, especially when you're engaging in it a lot on YouTube, you start to get a distort, like a distorted view of people in general right because i swear i've never seen so many you know people that i think are unintelligent evil and low down like i've have seen in this youtube sector so it was dope so after dinner um we was going on the rooftop because we had a rooftop area that was really nice with the pool with the nice views I think I showed y'all that or maybe I'll put it on my Instagram I'll have to come back over here and show it to my YouTube but the the rooftop was so beautiful it had two different pools it had a great view of the sunrise the beach everything right so we went up there that night after YouTube and all the mess that you encountered I guess you would have to wonder are there any kind-hearted people that exist right <laughs> Exactly. So that's just how I was walking around with my perspective, y'all. Hey, Bridget. Right, Dede. Right, Patricia. Hey, Jacqueline Drake. How are you, boo? Uh, ads running, period. Yeah, watch them ads, honey. <laughs> so uh, we got on the roof and we started playing different games after we had dinner. We played Family Feud and I was one of the team captains. Um, I don't know if, if Nana told y'all this or not. I think she did tell y'all this when we was going to go get our tattoos, but it was like at a time where everybody was just getting up in U.S. time and it was still like seven, eight o'clock Bali time or whatever in the afternoon. So she did talk about that a little bit, I think, in that video, but she didn't go into details on it. Uh, you needed that getaway. I did, Das. It, it was very good to my spirit, um, and I'm happy that I went. So... um we played Family Feud, and we played this getting to know you game. So throughout the whole trip, his whole idea was for us to play games, get to know each other, and to bring our inner child out, right? And I felt like he did that because typically as adults, and this is what he like explained a little bit, and I'm just paraphrasing what he said. He was like, you know, often as we get older, um, we, we tend to – like not have that childlike imagination, not have that childlike innocence or fun anymore. Once we get to be an adult, life starts happening. You got to pay bills. You got to do this. You got to do that. You're going through school. You're going through different obstacles that you're facing. And you kind of lose that childlike innocence that make like, you know, life worthwhile. Right. So he was like, on this trip, I want you guys to take these adventures as your child version, like the child version of you. How would you describe what you went what you went through on this trip? How would you describe, you know, the people that you've encountered while you were here in Bali through a child's perspective? So I'm like, that's crazy that you said that on this trip, because one of the things that the people on YouTube will always criticize me for, he sounds like a very nice guy. He is like, an angel, y'all. A real angel. 100% a real angel. And that's why I, I love to keep the connection and the vibes going with um, the leader of, you know, the retreat that we went on because he just showed a different level of love that was so genuine, but 
it kind of threw me off at first. <laughs> Cause I'd be skeptical of people, y'all. That's my Scorpio in me that pop out. I always think somebody is just being weird, but it is some genuine people in this world. So when he was bringing up the idea of just like taking these adventures through your child self, I was like, wow, that's crazy that, um, that was one of the things that people always criticize me for on YouTube because I am a 27 year old woman and I have a close bond and relationship with my nieces and nephews. I get on the trampoline with them. I'm sliding down the slides with them when we at the park, I'm playing tag. I'm doing all of these different things and interacting with my people, right? Because these are the kids that I love. These are the people that I watched grow up and I have a bond with them. Them people tried to demonize the fact that I still have an aspect of my child like within me, but I feel like if you don't, you know, activate that as an adult, life could be pretty miserable, honestly. If you don't know how to go around and just have fun, then something is wrong with you, you know? And if you think having fun <laughs> is immature and childish, then you news flash for you. You got to wake up. Because struggling and, and, and going through bills and all of that type of stuff, yes, that's a part of adulthood, but you don't leave you don't leave behind that childlike essence because that's what takes you through the hard times that life, you know, take you through or whatever. So I was just like, damn, that's crazy you said that because I always get judged a lot for my childlike energy that I have with the children that you know, my brother had, my sister, you know, the children in my family, I can relate to them because I still have a level of funness within my spirit and adventure or whatever, right? So let's go past that part. So we was playing Family Feud. I was the team captain and it was so funny. Oh, I should have put these videos together, y'all. I'm so sorry. I'm going to get the videos together um, so I can do a little vloggy vlog because I do have some clips. So we was playing Family Feud, and it was like only number one answers, right? So on each team, <laughs> every time we came up to give a new answer, it had to be a different person or whatever, right? Only number one answers. So one question that, two questions I'll say, that really stuck out to me while we was playing Family Feud that had the whole party rocking. One was, what what's one thing that a cat, a dog would never take out, you'll be surprised a dog take outside with them or something like that. And people was like, oh, his, 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 uh, food bowl, his, his, um, leash, his, this, his, that. Now the one girl who was fired up with me, cause we had a couple drinks. When I tell y'all those martinis, I had a, um, I didn't even have a martini. I had a margarita. Hold on. I had a martini and the girl Danny was the only other person I was drinking. We was having a good time, okay? I was gone by the middle of the game. <laughs> Great first day. <laughs> Great first meeting. He made uh sense. Awesome. Yeah, he's great. Maturity kicks in on some and some seems like they want to stay a child. Yeah, but it's not nothing wrong with being a child or having a childlike essence because it keeps you young. Hey, Ann. That you just have patience with children. It's not being childish. I don't think it's childish. I think that um, it's just a very carefree free spirit that I have. Um, a very childlike spirit. Y'all know how kids is. They care free. They don't care. They, you know, adventurous. Their mind is, you know, very vivid and graphic. And their imagination is beautiful. And the way that they just walk around the life is just like they don't have a care in the world. And I feel like Sometimes that's the essence that I have, too. I still have a part of that essence in me. So I don't think it's childish at all. And I think it's a, we need to change the way that we talk about things. Because when you say something is childish, it gives like a negative connotation. I just think it's carefree, you know. Um, and that's the energy of a child, just carefree. Um, so that was hella funny. So that we had that question. And the one girl in our group, she was kind of tipsy, too, y'all. She was like... I know the answer. If y'all don't let me tell the answer, I'm going to be pissed because we was going down the line of answers that we thought would be the best answers or whatever. So um, she was like, I would just say mine. So she got up there. Shout out to my girl, Danny, because she was a vibe the whole time. She said, one thing you won't expect a cat to take outside with him is a dog. <laughs> 
or a dog will take their cat outside, something like that. That's what the question was. And she was right on the money. And it was so funny because after that, everybody was like, damn, because she was kind of tipsy. So everybody like, oh, she tipsy, whatever. They was kind of writing her off. But I'm like, nah, Danny, get up there and say your answer because you might be on to something. And her answer was spot on. So after that, people was like, damn, girl, like, you, that was a good answer. We wasn't even thinking like that. <laughs> We're not going to doubt you no more. <laughs> so that was hella funny. I was sitting back laughing. At a certain point, I even stopped giving answers because I was just gone. Uh, let me see. Hey, Douglas B. Hey, Kim. Hey, Special K. Thank you for the yellow and purple hearts, Pepper China. So that game was fun. And then another question that like had us up in the up world where everybody was battling it out. It was so funny. It was like, um, what is one thing that is always associated with vampires? So both sides went through their answers. Some people were saying veins. Some people were saying blood, garlic, salt, you know, uh, coffins, all of those different things. Right now, while we were in our group deliberating what <laughs> the, the, the answer was, we was like, OK. We want to say werewolves. This is the one answer that I was stuck on that I was mad as hell that they didn't want to get up there and say. Because I'm like, bro, if you watch Twilight and y'all know Twilight is the biggest vampire movie to this day. Surpassed Blade, surpassed any vampire show, any other vampire movie. When y'all think of vampires, y'all think of Twilight. Or at least I know I do because they took over for a while. So I'm like, well, it's not veins, it's not blood, it's not this, so it got to be werewolves. And I was like, no, that's not right, that's not right. Da -da 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 -da. So I'm like, okay. So they went up, they said a few answers, wasn't right. They said werewolves, it wasn't right. So somebody was like, I'm going to just say Twilight. And our group got it right. They was like, yes, it's Twilight. But it was so funny because we were sitting there arguing about it and giving examples out of Twilight and not automatically went to Twilight. So then we played this other game. It was called a getting to know you game. So for a minute, he had everybody going up to a different person after the timer went off each round. You go up to a different person and you tell them two things personal about yourself that you want them to know. When I take my uh, grants to the park, I still get on the swings and slides, and I am 62. I love interacting with them. It ain't nothing wrong with it, Douglas. It ain't nothing wrong with it. You feel me? A lot of these people need to do the same thing. Maybe they wouldn't have their panties in a bunch like they always do. Um, so we played the getting to know you game. And um, one of the things that I have said that I wanted people to know about me um, that was, like, personal to myself I had said something like um, just having, like, the spirit of doubt in my plans or something like that because I'm just, like, sometimes, you know, I'm not too sure about the different things that I want to do. Um, sometimes I, I, I can feed into that negative self-talk just a little bit and, and kind of get discouraged. So when I was telling different people these things, while also telling them I'm about to graduate. <laughs> yeah, May 23rd, we graduate, honey. We walking the stage. Um, because, you know, when you get into your senior year, you kind of get like a little, it's exciting. But at the same time, it's just like, okay, what am I doing next? Which I have an idea of what I want to do. But at the same time, it don't make it any less scary. So I was telling them that, the different people that I was walking around and telling them my two personal things about or whatever. And I was telling them that I'm open-minded because I really am. Um, and after everybody went through and we was all getting to know each other, these were all games, I guess, that he was, you know, icebreakers for people to get to know each other on a deeper level or just really get familiar with each other, remember each other's names and whose stories match with who and all that type of stuff. So after we went through a few rounds of that, just everybody going around and telling two things that's personal about them to a new person that they haven't talked to, he sat us all down and he was like, you know, what's something that somebody told you that stick out to you? And there was two different women there, y'all. A lot of them were way older. I was like, besides Amir, who was 21, I was the youngest one there, right? He came with his mom. But everybody else was like 30s and up. So um, he was like, what's something that somebody said that stuck out to you? And, and this, that, and the third. And I was like, well, I have one. I actually spoke to two different ladies. One of them was the lady from Oakland that I love her, Miss Rhonda. Shout out to Miss Rhonda. <laughs> um, 
I was telling her about, you know, just having a little bit of doubt in my plans and what I wanted to do, um, being excited, but also being, you know, scared of the unknown just a tad bit. And so when I was telling them that, they was being really encouraging with their words, almost like mother figures. You feel me? And it's, and it's crazy because the way that they was talking to me, I, I could tell that they have kids. Um, and and I, I was saying with one of the women that um, I never gave up. That's one thing that I wanted people to know about me. Um, that's a personal fact. I never gave up on my goals or whatever. And she was like, you know, it's so funny that you said that because I always try to tell my kids, like, don't give up. One of my kids, um, actually, he's taking a break from college and he's not really sure what he wants to do. So the fact that you're sure about what you want to do or in the essence, you never gave up even in moments where you were unsure. I think that's a beautiful thing. And I'm telling you to keep going. That's what Miss Rhonda said to me. And then there was this older white lady that was there and she was like yeah I wish like when I was your age and I was going through school and all that different stuff I had somebody to tell me the things that I'm telling you because I didn't really know I didn't really have that guidance and, and different stuff like that this is what the lady is telling to me so I told him I was like those are the two things that stood out to me because when I told them that they were very motherly and, and comforting and encouraging right uh, let me see. My daughter's 17. A love scared me running through the house saying someone's in her room. She played too much. Doubt is a crippling attribute of fear. Yeah. It's so beautiful when two sisters can get together and go on a trip together. That's amazing. Great sisters. Yeah. We was the sisters the whole time, Miss Cheryl. Hey, Erica. How are you? Hey, Miss Marilyn. Hey, Jersey girl with the yellow hearts. Dad says, there's nothing wrong with that bond as an auntie, Dada. You're an awesome, intelligent young woman and very mature. Keep shining bright and being a perfect role model as an auntie. Absolutely, Dad. Absolutely. I was the first generation college graduate and I didn't have the encouragement. I had to encourage myself and it was hard. Yeah, that's what the lady was telling me. Y'all had similar stories, special, okay? And I was like, you know what? That's not my. That's not really my story because... I was surrounded by nothing but encouragement, you know, from my brother to my mama, like literally supporting me, driving me back and forth to school. When I get my first big check, I got to give half to my mama, y'all, because throughout this whole journey, my mom was picking me up, dropping me off. Even when I was um, at the community college level, she was up late when I had class at 10 o'clock at night. She was up late waiting for me at the bus stop. Like whatever it was or whatever it was that I needed help with, she was there for me. My sister, she was there for me. So I didn't have those experiences. Now, do I have moments of just doubt just myself? Absolutely. And I think we all do, right? It's the fear of the unknown that I like to call it. Um, because when you don't know certain things, it could be a little scary. So I was telling them, like, yeah, I, I understand where you're coming from. Um, my story was just completely different. Um, I've always had everybody, like, put me on this pedestal and tell me how, how great I am or how much I could do this or how smart I was. You feel me? So I never experienced people telling me that I was stupid or I wasn't going to make it or what you're doing is a waste of time. That's not my story. So we did that. We talked about that. And then that was the wrap of night one. Now we stayed up y'all till like 11 o'clock at night. <laughs> then it was at seven. We played these two games till like 10 o'clock at night. And, and then after the games was over, we just uh, was sitting around talking and stuff like that. And they had a game room at the resort place. And they even, the party continued, but I went to my room. I was tired. It was hot. Y'all know it was real humid in Bali. I kept telling y'all about that. So I'm like, I'm sweating. I'm hot. I want to get in the shower. So I took another shower and I went to sleep. Hey, Dorothy. So the next day, y'all, was beach day. Um, Let me see what the beach was called that we went to. It was really, really dope. It was the beach was a good time. That's when I really started letting my hair down because it was everybody was a vibe. Okay. Um <laughs> let me see the itinerary because he had it all planned out, love. He did such a great job. So day two was Uluwatu Love, right? So that's what he called it. <laughs> so we had breakfast at the hotel. 
Everybody woke up early, went to go get breakfast. Uh, I think that was the day I went live. The first live that I did was at breakfast. That was the next day, y'all. And I was sitting down and I was showing y'all, um, what did I have on? I think I still had on like this little short set. And me and Nana, we went upstairs, we ate breakfast, we went back down, we got dressed for the beach. Well, no, we didn't go back down. And y'all remember this, right? Nana, when we were on the live, she was like, oh, I want to go to the beach because it was a beach right by our resort. So I'm like, girl, we going to a beach already later. But um, the guy who was running the whole retreat, he was like, oh, yeah, um, if you guys get a chance, go and check out the beach. That's not the beach we're going to go to because the currents are so heavy. You know, you know, black people don't get in that type of water. <laughs> so he had me cracking up. And I was like, yeah, you're right. We don't. So um, after we was eating breakfast and, and, and Nana went to the beach, I followed her down to the beach. Yes, congratulations to Special K for getting through that obstacle and doing good when she did. Dede, one of the best gifts you will ever give your mom is when you cross that stage. That's a fact, Miss Classy Lady. That's a Fendi. Okay. Um, so we went to the beach, y'all. And I think I told y'all this part. This was the different beach. So me and Majine, we went down there. I was showing y'all, like, it was the little bugs all over the walls and stuff. I accidentally touched one because the steps in Bali, oh, my God, it's so many steps, y'all. I got a leg workout. I was worked out 100%. I think I lost a little weight while I was out there. So we was walking down the stairs, and as we got towards the beach, they had this part where it, it was, like, really nice graffiti art, really beautiful. Then we got down to the beach. The water felt amazing. Me and uh, Majine, we sat there for a little bit before we had to go back and get dressed and meet everybody to go to the other beach. So um, while we were sitting there, I was just letting the water get all on me. I actually ended up sitting down with my shorts <laughs> and all of that. I had my little um, bag that was kind of not see-through. Well, it was see-through. It was kind of holy or whatever. Y'all know my little black bag. That's cute. So um, I had that bag with me, and I'm sitting on the ground. So the, the water comes up because the waves and the currents are heavy on this beach. And the where, where I'm sitting, I didn't think the water would come up that far. Me and my Jane got soaked. So when the water came up, I got soaked. Uh, my phone was a little bit wet. My my pump had sand all in it, and I think I told y'all about the whole sand part, and I'm going to explain it again. So once the water had got all in my stuff, I was like, oh, yeah, no, it's time to go. We need to go get dressed anyways. We was just up there taking our pictures, getting our videos, because that was the first beach that we went to. And then when we were done, we went back to the, our hotel rooms to get ready. So I'm in my hotel room. I'm cleaning out my asthma pump, y'all, because I'm like, oh, my God, it's hella sand. It's wet whatever i'm about to clean it out so i um i'm using the water the um the actual hotel water which was filtered because y'all know bali water is crazy and i'm gonna i'm gonna tell y'all about that too because <laughs> i had an experience um what was I saying? So I was cleaning out the, the, the plastic part without the pump in it. I was cleaning it out, cleaning it out, cleaning it out. So I put it back in there once I was done and I dried it or whatever. I took a puff of my asthma pump and all I got was sand down my throat. <laughs> so I had hella sand in my throat. <coughs> and um, I was like, uh, uh, uh. <laughs> If y'all can see me, I would have went viral. I don't know why I don't set my camera up and just record me all day. Because I swear to God, the different range of emotions that I'll be going through and different issues that I'll be facing and how I respond to them be funny as hell. I would have went viral by now. So I'm just like, damn, I got all this sand in my throat instantly. I started thinking about all of the, the things that people was telling us about the water and all of that different stuff. So I'm like, oh, my God, what if I get Bali belly? So I just started up chucking. I'm like, oh, my God, the sand is in my throat. It's dirty. Like, it was a lot. So <laughs> I just started up chucking a little bit. So I'm like, okay, I feel better because 
I know I ain't got no sand in my throat no more. I ain't got it all out. <laughs> so after that, I got in the shower and um, I got ready to go to the beach. So I put on my bathing suit. I had my cute little two piece. I know y'all seen that shirt where I bit down and I was uh doing the Meganese. That was the day we went to the other beach. It's called, um, what was the beach called? I forgot what the beach was called. Let me see. It was like Badunkadunk, Padunkadunk Beach, something like that. And every time I think of the beach, I think of Badunkadunk. Because it, it kind of sounds similar to that or whatever, right? So we went there. It was a vibe. Now, um, one of the other ladies that was there, she was really sweet, too. Her name is Porter. Um, she had heard about the situation that had happened before I got there. And um, when we all was sitting down, me and Nana had went down before majority of the people, and we had found a table that was clear. So we sat, put all of our stuff over there, and we were sitting over there for a little bit. Then Nana went off and was getting into the water and doing her own thing. We had got our coconuts that were fresh but they were warm so I didn't really like it and we got some water and we was just sitting there chilling one of the other women that was on the retreat with us I guess heard about what had happened um and she just came up to me and she was just being nice and being kind so that was another part of the trip where I was just like these people are just really sweet um you know, I can let my, my, my guard down with these people because they have nothing but genuine intentions. So me and her, we sat there, we talked for like a good 30 to 45 minutes, just engaging in deep conversation about, you know, what we've been through in life, the different obstacles we overcame. She was a Sagittarius just like me. So we instantly hit it off along with another girl named Liz. She's a Sagittarius. She was lit, like literally as soon as I met her in the lobby, we connected, we was vibing, ready to dance, all type of shit. So it was a good vibes. Um, it was her and another girl named Emma that I was sitting there talking to or whatever. So they was really dope, really sweet, just pouring a lot of love to me and vice versa. I was pouring love into them. And so once I got ready to get in the water because it was so hot, Y'all, it was a time, okay? Everybody was in the water having the time of their lives. One of the guys, Amir, he was doing surf lessons, which I would have done it too, but I just can't swim. So I didn't want to go too far out in the water. And it was so funny because <laughs> all the black people was closest to the shore than out further out. Um, and Amir was like the only one that was out there taking swimming Um what is it? Surfing lessons besides the guy, Brian, who I think is a sweetie. Um, so it was hella funny because once I got in the water, that's when the turn up started. So we in the water. I'm swimming. I'm thinking I'm a mermaid. Hey, Linda. I'm thinking I'm a mermaid, all type of stuff. I'm just getting my hair wet. And I remember on my Instagram, I had asked them, like, should I get braids? Should I get twists? Should I do that? And I know I asked y'all, too. And a lot of y'all was telling me, don't get the twists, because once they get wet, it's going to be um tacky. Not tacky, but, like, tangled or whatever. Honey, I didn't care. I got my twist. And as soon as I got in that water, I ducked my whole head in the water. <laughs> so it felt so good to be in the water, y'all. And it was so funny because the currents and the waves were so strong, it was pulling me in and out, in and out, in and out of the water. They was filming me and cracking up, y'all. It was about two to three times where the current was whooping my ass, okay? I just let the current go. I'm like, all right, you know what? It's going to do what it want to do. It was pushing me back onto the shore, y'all. Just whooping my ass. One of the girls, I had her cracking up because... <laughs> the current washed me back up on the shore literally to where I ran into her and almost like ran her over that's how bad I was I was like tumbleweed in that water and I had everybody dying laughing cracking up <laughs> and they was recording me and I still I want the videos I gotta ask them in the group chat who got the video of me getting treated by the water. Hey, yo, yo, thank you for being a member for 10 months. Hello, beautiful Dan Chat. Hey, girl. So um, that was cool. We was in the water, having a good time. It was a vibe. After that, everybody wanted to go eat. So um, we were heading back up the, the rocks 
to go eat and we seen a bunch of little monkeys and all of that different type of stuff, right? So I get up to the top, right? Because everything in Bali is, is stairs. Even leading to the beach, you had to go through these stairs in this cave to get down to the beach. So I get back up to the top, right? <laughs> I leave my asthma pump at the beach. And it's so funny because me and my neighbor was just talking about this. She was like, girl, when we was out there, you was leaving your asthma pump. You lost your phone. You was <laughs> dealing with different situations. And I'm like, yeah, girl, that's just my life. It seems to be like, but we kept it together. Hey, Lissandra, how are you? Um, So I left my pump down there. And my neighbor was like, okay, well, you left it. I'm going to go get it for you, right? Then she was like, actually, you could go get it because I don't know where you left it at. So I'm like, all right, I'm going to go get my pump. She had text in the group chat for them to get it, but nobody was responding because our phones wasn't working <laughs> while we was out moving around. Like some days it worked, some days it didn't. So wasn't none of them responding, and I didn't want to get left because we had to leave the beach by 2.33 o'clock. So I'm like, all right, bro, let me go get my asthma pump. Because at this point, y'all know my asthma pump is my lifeline. And I have my nebulizer and all of that. But my asthma pump take me throughout the day. So I go back down there, right? <laughs> and it was this dude named Bear in our group. <laughs> and um, I walk down there and I get my asthma pump. He was like, man, why was I looking at that pump the whole time? And I was wondering who left that shit. <laughs> I like me, me. I would leave my head if it wasn't attached to my neck, okay? It would be a head going around somewhere. You'll probably see it going down Highway 4. My my arm would be at San Jose State. Like, you feel me? Like, if I, if I lose things very easily. So I'm happy that I was able to get my goddamn pump, and I'm happy that none of the monkeys take it because it was a bunch of monkeys at this beach. Y'all. It was monkeys everywhere. So, and it was funny because the second time going back up these steps from the beach to the top, I felt like I had a little bit of power. Shout out to my asthma pump. My asthma pump got put all the energy back in me to get up back up them stairs. And it was actually easier the second time. <laughs> so that was funny. So then after that, we went to go eat. Um, I forgot what the place was called, but we wanted to go there because... The guy who was running the trip, he's been there plenty of times. He said they had great French toast. A lot of the people wanted to try their breakfast or whatever. And so we went there as a group. Um, Y'all stop laughing at me. <laughs> I was dead serious about my asthma pump. I was not leaving my, my pump. So, um, and, and it took me through the whole trip. Hallelujah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> we get to the spot so everybody's order, ordering this french toast with ice cream french toast with ice cream y'all i'm not a breakfast person like that i'm not even a french toast person if i order some breakfast food it's gonna be pancakes and bacon eggs hash brown you know stuff like that but i i just don't really eat breakfast period i like lunch food and i like dinner food so we um at the place, getting lunch. The place was so nice. It was so beautiful outside, good vibes, beautiful people. They had the music playing. It was lit. We all had smoothies and detox drinks and vitamin shots. Um, uh, Janae had had this um detox drink that has spirulina and something else in it that she was talking about, which was really good for you. And it actually tasted good, too, which was to her surprise, because she was like, this got spirulina in it. It might be nasty. Excuse me, y'all. Um, so we sat down, and we was all sitting there um, ordering our food. I didn't get no breakfast food because I'm not into it, like I said. So I got me some nachos. I wanted to uh, eat some lunch food or whatever. So everybody had their different breakfast food. We took up like two tables because it was a lot of us, y'all. It was like 21 people at, like, at this whole retreat. Uh, some of us went to the beach. Some of us didn't because of all the stairs. Hold on, y'all. I got a burp.
So um, it was a lot of us. Everybody ordered their food. Everybody's like sharing their food, which was so cute because everybody was just being super good vibes, good energy. So I was having a little bit of uh, Majine French toast, which was mwah, the best French toast I ever had. I've never had no French toast as good as that. And their ice cream was fire, y'all. Everything about Bali was fire, you guys. And what's crazy is they don't put as much gunk in their food that we do. And it was still really, really good and sweet. But you could tell it had less sugar, less processed sugar, I will say, in a lot of their stuff. Because even their ice cream was like fire. But it, it, it wasn't like heavily processed sugar in it. It was like natural sugars. My nachos were good, right? <laughs> And I had the whole I had the whole group cracking up because when I got my nachos, I was like, oh, these are fire. I want some more nacho cheese sauce. <laughs> so I tell them, I asked the waiter when she came back, I was like, hey, can you guys put more nacho cheese on my nachos? Because I was enjoying them. And so she was like, yeah, it's gonna charge extra. Da, da, da. I'm like, that's fine. I just want some extra nacho cheese. So the lady takes it and she brings it back. And then I start looking at my plate, and this is what kind of turned me off a little bit. <laughs> and y'all, imagine they finished my nachos. They were fire, though. So I'm not going to just drag them for their nachos. I'm just telling y'all my full experience and how I was reacting to stuff, right? So they put the nachos back on my plate, on the table. And I'm looking at the nachos, and I'm like, why they got pieces of sliced cheese? unmelted on my plate i thought i was getting you know regular nacho cheese <laughs> that they did you normally put on nachos or you know sprinkled cheese you melted chow i had sliced cheese on my plate crafts it seemed like okay <laughs> the sliced cheese you put on your homemade sandwiches okay so it was hella funny because i'm like Bro, I really liked them, my nachos. They were fire. But then I tell them to give me more cheese, and they bring all of this cheese back that's unmelted on my plate. And I didn't even know it was sliced cheese. You feel me? So they bought it back to me. So it was hella funny. So I had them cracking up. And I was like, girl, um, I feel you because uh, I don't want no sliced cheese on my nachos either. And I'm like, it's not even the fact that they put sliced cheese on my nachos. It's the fact that it wasn't melted. <laughs> so it was big pieces of sliced cheese on my shit. <laughs> and I had the whole table cracking up, y'all. And we had smoothies, all type of shit. Everything was good. Even the nachos. I give the nachos a 9.5 out of 10. But we all trying each other food and stuff. I got to a point to where I was full. Like one of the ladies... I had some guacamole on the side with my nachos, and I don't eat guacamole. So she was like, oh, can I try it? I'm like, yeah, girl, here, you can have it. You can have this uh, this, this uh, guacamole because I'm not going to eat it. And she loved it. So we was all, like, picking off each other plates, seeing what we like, what we didn't like, all that type of stuff, right? Everybody being super sweet, super good vibes. I had the whole table cracking up. We was taking our pictures. I didn't know you had asthma. Mm -hmm. I've been having asthma my whole life, Daz. I've been dealing with um, asthma for a long time, since I was a baby. Um, so that was funny. And then what did we do after the spot? We went back to the, the hotel to get in the shower. I would have sent my nachos back. I couldn't even send them back because Nana polished them off. They was fire. She liked them. I liked them too. I ate everything but the slices of, of uh, cheese that they put on there that wasn't melted. Because it actually wasn't good. It wasn't bad, Riri. I just was like, well, damn, y'all could have melted it a little bit more. But it's all good. So um, we get back in the van, all of us, and we go back to the hotel so everybody could get in showers. Because mind y'all, we just came from the beach. Um, the guy, Chris, the guy's brother who was running a retreat, his brother had us cracking up because he was like, man, I'm ready to get back to the hotel because I got sand in places I ain't never thought I would have sand in. <laughs> and I was like, bro, 
I feel you. And it was so funny watching their dynamic because Chris and JT was like me and my Janae. Like, JT is the older brother that's, like, always got in his younger brother. He is the one that's, like, you know, just have more of a lighthearted type of personality. Meanwhile, Chris is, he call him the grouch. And I think I act like a grouch a little bit sometimes. Um, Chris is very honest. Chris will say the first thing that come to his mind and not even think about it. We were very similar in that aspect, right? So it was funny watching their brother dynamic because I can relate to it with me and, and, and my Janae's dynamic. It was hilarious. Um, so we got back to the room. We got in our showers. And I forgot what else we did that night. What else did we do? I think we all, like, met up for games and stuff like that. But I don't – I didn't meet up for no games that night. I, I took my ass to sleep, I think. Let me call my Janae. Did we go anywhere else on day two? Um, but yeah, y'all, so that was pretty much day one and day two. I'll, I'll tell y'all about the rest. Hello? Hey, so, um, when we went to the beach that day and we went out to eat and we went back to the hotel, what else did we do that night? I forgot. The fire show. Okay. All right. Bye. <laughs> Thank you. I forgot. So then y'all, we went to this fire show. Um, that was the picture with my blue dress on. And I had the little orange thing tied around me with the, with the, it was the purple little skirt thing because my dress was too short. And then I had the orange piece tied around with my blue floral dress on. So after that, we went to the fire show, which the fire show was fire. That's when I had lost my phone, I think, when I left it in, um, no, I had left my phone going to the beach and, um, Actually, that's Cap. See, I can't even remember when I had lost it, y'all. It was one of those days. But um, everybody got dressed, you know, looked great. We went to the fire show. That was dope. Um, I always think fire shows are fun and entertaining, even though we were sitting there and we didn't really know what the stories were about. Um, it was still fun to listen to, you know, and, and fun to watch because they was throwing the fire. They was doing their little chants. They were dancing. And Majine, it was funny because she was sitting next to a lady who knew what the show was about. And pretty much the lady was telling her like, oh, this is a show about a king who was a bad king. He was trying to swindle the lady into marrying him and acting like he was good, but he was really bad. And, and the highlight of the fire show to me was this one character, this guy, he was running through the crowd. Mind you, we're sitting in this big ass. I know y'all seen some of it because Nana went live. And that's what I call a good mother. Nobody's perfect, but she did the best she can do. Uh huh. Um, I know y'all seen Nana's life with the fire show and how it looked. The the vibes was lit. The views were amazing, but it was packed. When I tell you, people were sitting leg to leg. Like if you turned, you could have kissed the person next to you. That's how the vibe was. It was packed. So um, we did that. That was good. One of the characters was, was like running through the crowd. Um, he was jumping from stuff, you know, kicking the fire all over the place. So it was a good time. Um, after that, th that was the funny night um, because <laughs> when we were leaving, <coughs> trying to get on our um, back on our caravans, and we had two vans, y'all. One van was the the sleepy. Uh, a a they called it AARP van where they was just not turning up. They was not playing no music. Everybody was in the chill van, and then the other van with JT and it was the turn up van because we was always doing karaoke. And I got some videos I'll share from his Instagram where we was all singing and doing karaoke and all of that stuff. Um, in uh that van. So on our way back to the vans, it was hella funny because this guy had scared Liz that was in our group. And Liz had been spooked because when we was at the beach earlier, and this is the story about the glasses. I don't know if I told y'all this story or not. I 
think I did, but I'm not too certain. Hey, Marmar, Unchat Late will be back on the replay gang. Thank you, boo. That trip was such a blessing to you and for you because they were messengers and God just wanted you to know that you're good and a good job there. Yeah, that was dope. I'm so proud of you. Just know you are going to be greater. Keep shining, sweetheart. Congratulations. Thank you. You're so sweet. Thank you for pouring life into the young queen. You're great too, Miss Cheryl. So um, it was funny because a guy scared the girl Liz and she was scared of the monkeys. She's been traumatized since day two of the monkeys, y'all. And when I get into more of the days, what we went through is going to make sense. So he scared her like it was somebody grabbing at her feet or, or trying to touch her, or trying to grab her dress or whatever. So she got spooked. And, and this is why she was spooked. So when we were at the beach earlier, um, on our way up as we were leaving, I wasn't with them, but they was telling us the story um, at, at the dinner or whatever. Um, the little girl, when they were walking back up the stairs going to the caravans, one of the little girl's glasses got took by the monkey. They ain't no joke, Special K. So the little girl was crying, crying, crying. And Liz was like, I'm scared of the monkeys. After she seen that shit, she was like, no, I'm not. I'm not fucking with the monkeys. The monkeys better stay far away from me. Okay. So the monkey took the little girl glasses. The dad had to go get the glasses from the monkey. And when they got the glasses back from the monkey, the monkey like bit majority of the leg off off the little girl glasses so i'm just like damn <laughs> these kids gonna have stories to tell when they go back to school because <laughs> the monkeys in bali was terrorizing y'all terrorizing okay like insane insane how aggressive the monkeys were and i'm gonna tell y'all my story too because i know i was out here talking shit talking about i'll fight a monkey fuck that I got punked by a monkey too, y'all. <laughs> I'm going to tell y'all my story on another video because it's late and I want y'all to be able to go to sleep. But I did want to talk about this one last thing that we had got on day two of um, the, the trip. So at the very beginning, before we even went to the, the beach, we were taking pictures in our spread love gear and he gave us gratitude journals to write in every day. So um, I never wrote in this journal and I haven't wrote in it yet, but I wanted to show y'all what it looks like. Maybe I'll upload a video um, of what it looks like, but it just says spread love Bali adventure. And um, every day we were supposed to get into um, writing into this journal. Right. And it says like a list of daily habits, like make your bed, drink a glass of water, stretch, do five minutes of a physical activity, three minutes of meditation, read for three minutes, make a to-do list, and then also make a gratitude list for the day. He was encouraging us to write in it um, while we were on the vacation, but for some reason, I never just got access to a pen. <laughs> um, they had a, a limited amount of pens at the hotels, and I just wasn't pushing that hard to get a pen. I wanted to enjoy the experience. Uh, I am Laura and wow. Yeah. Poor little girl. Yeah. It was a, it was a story. It was a crazy story, but I did want to read one of these quotes that he have out of here. Y'all to just, um, end the live on something that's good. And it was one of the, it's a quote by Oprah that he put in here. It's the first one that I see in the book. Oh no, I'm going to read this one. This one is really good. And I think this is a good daily reminder to have every day, right? So it says, when you look at life through the eyes of gratitude, the world becomes a magical and amazing place. I literally was just dealing with this today, right? I was dealing with um, just like, dang, like I'm still tired. I'm still on bodily time. I am you know, still trying to get into the swing of things and, and trying to, you know, readjust, make sure I come back, have my focus together, focus on the things that I actually need to focus on, things that matter in life, things that is going to push me forward and keep me on this uphill incline that I'm on. Hey, Diamond D. Boo. So, and it was crazy because me and my mom was talking about it today, earlier, and um, yeah, jet lagged. 
And she had said something too. And I was like, listen, we just got to be grateful for the day. We got to be grateful that God woke us up today. I have to be grateful no matter how jet lagged I am, honey. I went to Bali. Okay. And I and I did that like it was nothing. Okay. Like, like I'm a native there. Okay. <laughs> I have to show gratitude every single day because when we get caught up in the negative thoughts of the world and the way the world that is going, you know, it's easy to get sucked into the negativity when we have so many things to be grateful for. So I love this quote and I'm happy that this was the one that I read tonight. It's by Jennifer Gale. It says, when you look at life through the eyes of gratitude, the world becomes a magical and amazing place. I'm going to have to put that in the chat so I can leave that off with y'all because that that that's powerful to me. Hey, LaWanda. LaWanda H. Let me see when you look at life through the eyes of gratitude. The world becomes a magical place. Mm, Let me see. And I'm going to leave that on there. Boom. Um, let me see. Day day, I listen to Forrest Frank Good Day as my theme song every morning. It gets me going. That's good. Great perspective for all of us to hold on to. Yeah, that's why I wanted to put it in the chat. And I I, I got to put, like, these daily reminders in my head so that I, 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 like, you know, take a step back, breathe. And remember that it's a blessing to be here. It's a blessing for me to be able to open my laptop and talk to y'all. It's a blessing for me to talk about my experience and still hold an okay audience. Shout out to one all 122 of y'all. We've been consistent through this whole life and it's late. Shout out to y'all. It's a blessing that I can come on here and make money on my platform. You know, it's a blessing that um, I have the family that I have. It's a blessing and I am forever grateful. God, thank you so much because life could be worse and it's not. And, you know, everything that you've been testing me with, I think I've been showing that I'm strong enough to deal with it. And I, I'm just I'm just grateful for everything. Look at this. Look at all the support you sent me. The Raw Squad. Shout out to y'all. Y'all have been an immense, immense, immense source of support. OK, and I don't even think y'all know how much y'all mean to me and how much y'all been there to pick me up when I fell down. Pick me up and tell me, hey, uh, uh-uh, don't do that. You've been doing good. Focus on what's important. We graduate May 23rd. <laughs> Come on, niece. You feel me? I- I'm so grateful. Grateful. My it, like, uh, I-, I don't even have no words to say. You know, four years ago, I wouldn't have thought that I would have this platform and and was able to touch lives and have other people's lives touch me and to have people who in my life that I don't really know, but I have so much respect for because of the way that they carry themselves and the way that they interact with me. Look at God. That's gratitude. That's grace. That's love, honey. And the whole trip was about love, spreading love. Being kind. Hey, Dad and Chad, didn't know you were on. Glad you're feeling better, Buddha. Thank you, Keisha B. Amen. Speak, Dad A. Absolutely. So when I tell y'all I love y'all, I really mean it because y'all have an everlasting positive effect on my life and my mood and the way that I choose to move. Speak, Dad I'm here for it. Yeah, definitely going back on this replay gang. Yes, Mama, you got to catch it from the beginning. That is such a blessing, Dad You are a beautiful, intelligent young lady. Thank you. Lawanda, you're beautiful too. Absolutely. Yeah, my girl Diamond D. Praise him. Yeah, all the time. What a blessing. I'm so grateful. Me too, Laura Ann. I'm so grateful that we found this this sisterhood, this auntiehood, this cousinhood (laughs) of women. 
like what minded women, strong women, powerful women. It's a blessing. You were supposed to take this trip. Nothing uh, is, uh, yeah, happenstance. Mm -mm. No, it's not, Leo, Grandma. And and that's the what I got from this whole trip. And I'm going to go through. I'm going to break down day three, day four, day five, day six, day seven. I'm going to run it up off my Bali trip. I know people are interested and wanting to know what was going on in Bali. What did we do? What was the experience like? What did we talk about? I have so many great things and so many great conversations that I had on that trip that literally made me want to do better. Ain't it crazy to be around a bunch of strangers and all of the the people that you done made? Now they my peoples. You feel me? We still be texting to this day. We all follow each other on Instagram. They got my YouTube. Like, it's crazy that I met all of those people and they made me want to be better. You know? Like perfect strangers. It's almost like alchemy the way that that happened. We love you, doll. I love you too, Jersey girl. That happened to me when I was in New York years ago when I was young. A monkey snatched my heart. Uh, what rope belt off me? I had to give him a treat to get it back. That's how they be. I love you too. That ain't my fave cybernese, period. Lawanda, I love you too. My favorite cyber auntie. That's beautiful day. Yeah, 100%. So my 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 titles may be a little clickbaity, y'all. Um, <laughs> but it's definitely nothing but good vibes. Okay. So on that note, I'm gonna let y'all go. I hope you guys have a great night. I'm gonna try to go to sleep before four or five o'clock <laughs> in the morning. Um, and I, I just hope y'all had a great day. Cause I had a, a a beautiful blessed Monday. You are a great young lady and will succeed in whatever you do. God bless you. God bless you too. Food for your soul. Good night, sweetie. Yes, absolutely. I love y'all. Seriously. We love you too, Myra. Seriously, honey. You know, the Raw Squad is the best squad. And on that note, I love y'all. Spread love, peace, and tranquility. And have a good night. Deuces.